Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamers. Say, how do you make a pirate furious? Take away the P. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Captain's Log from Piff Games. We'll get back in the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Captain's Log from Fifth Games, one of four players take on the roles of various ship captains as they attempt to explore the seas, have adventures, and become the most famous pirate of them all. Each player is going to get their own player shipboard, and you're going to go ahead and kind of set that toward kind of the smallest available ship. You'll have a little uh, kind of an L shape that you'll kind of use to, to measure out how big your ship is. You'll place that on the smallest configuration, one cell. And then you're also going to go ahead and put out a marketplace, a scoreboard uh, with all the various cards around it. You're going to go ahead and place a starting location tile face up. And then you're going to just go ahead and put uh, tile locations face down with a fog of war all the way around it. Now you can go ahead and set how long you want the game to last for. Essentially, you have kind of a score uh, tracker um, board. You place kind of your token to show exactly how far you're playing the game to. And then you're also going to uh, kind of uh, place your token to, to show how many days are passing, the time passing. And then also you're going to place your tokens there. And if you're playing against, uh, you know, different nations or, or NPCs, whatever, you put their flags out there as well. Now on your turn, you can move and take an action, take an action and then move, or you can just take two actions. Now, first of all, as far as movement goes, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to look at your uh, ship uh, board. It's got kind of what whatever rating you're at, one cell, two cell, three cells, and you're going to see what your movement is like, and you can move that number of spaces, but you're going to kind of look uh, in the direction you're going. If you move, you know, you've got hexes. If you kind of turn around into the three rear hexes, you take a penalty, a movement penalty. Now you play a wind card. You may, depending on if the wind is with you or not, you may gain movement points or you may take a movement point penalty. Now, some of the actions you can take, you can do nothing if you want, or you can explore. If you explore, you can actually reveal three tiles next to you, and that kind of opens them up, and then you're going to, of course, populate those tiles with any tokens that may pop up. For instance, barrels, when they come out, you place a barrel token there. That may be something you can, you can get and exploit uh, later on uh, for an action. You can't interact with anything on the board. If you're next to a tavern, uh, you know, you can go in, you can kind of recruit... Uh, different kind of specialists or what have you. You can get mission cards. If you go to a, uh, you know, a, a port, you can buy, you can sell. You can go to a shipyard and get improvements for your ship. You can also repair. Uh, if you've got da taken damage, you can spend, I think, two wood to repair a part of your ship. And then, of course, also you can attack other uh, pirate ships that you're next to. You've got a range and you can fire at them. If you're adjacent to them in the expert mode, you can actually board them and have kind of ship-to-ship -ship combat that way. There's also a number of free actions you can do, and these don't count toward your kind of your action limitations. You can take any number of those free actions on your turn. Now, at the beginning of the game, you would actually draw an NPC card, keep it face down. After your first turn, you flip that card over and you see exactly what ship it is. It'll say what tile it spawns on. If that tile's not out, you go ahead and you wait for three turns for that tile to become uh, spawned. If it doesn't, you'll draw another NPC card. But essentially, you'll put that NPC uh, ship on the board, and you have little... Um, tokens you put on the rings around the uh, ships that kind of show what, what number you are. If you're the first player, it kind of shows, oh, it's a number one, so it's the first player. 
But you go ahead, you put that out there on the board, and then after you take your action, you're going to follow the instructions on the NPC card to do what it says. Now, you have different kinds of NPCs. You know, you have merchants, you have aggressive ships, defensive ships. Um, you have different, different kinds of ships, and then you just follow whatever the uh, order is on the card, and you begin moving them around and doing, uh, essentially taking their turn. Now, those NPCs don't belong to you. You simply just manage them. Now, what you're trying to do throughout the game is, is you're moving around, you're trying to gain fame points. In, in a multiplayer game, you're trying to gain more fame points than your enemies, uh, your opponents. If you are playing a solitaire game, you're trying to gain more fame points than the other nations. But you're going around and you're trying to uh, gain these fame points. You gain fame points by sinking a ship in the expert mode, boarding a ship. Um, if you get a certain number of barrels, you get fame points for that. If you increase the level of your ship, you get fame points. If you complete... Uh, a mission, you get a fame point. If you complete certain kinds of the same kinds of mission, you get ship points. So there's all different ways you can get these fame points uh, throughout the game. The first player that reaches their fame point total wins. Captain's Log. So, uh, first of all, um, uh, this is a game I, I actually got out to play solo. And so I get it out and I'm playing solo. I'm looking at the standard rules and, I'm, and there's some things that just weren't clear to me. Uh, just some things that didn't make sense. And I get about halfway through it, and then I start looking at the expert mode, and apparently you have to play the solitaire game in the expert mode. Uh, so I kind of played, ended up playing this kind of weird hybrid of, of both there. Um, and which brings me to my kind of first point, my first criticism of this game, and that is this is not really a good rule book. There are things like that that are just not clear. Um, one of the issues, I think there's a little, I think there may be a little translation issue because some of the English is a little clunky at times. Um, as I recall, there was like, sometimes it would say you reveal a card, other times it would say, you, you know, cards are discovered or undiscovered or revealed. And as far as I understand, it means the same thing here, but it's, it was kind of clunky in the language, the way it was used there. So that was a little disappointing, uh, because it, it, it kind of took time to figure out. And I was not, not wild about that. Um, but more than that, the, 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 the rule book, it's just not, um, terribly intuitive. It is not really easy to engage with on a lot of levels. Um, now, there are some concepts in this game, first of all, that are really, really cool. Um, I love games with like exploration and stuff, and this does that very well, um, where you're going to different locations and you're kind of exploring things and you're getting mission cards and going on different missions. That stuff I think is really, really well done here. I also like to the um, NPCs, how you are drawing the NPCs and the players themselves are controlling the NPCs. I think that, I think that's fun and that's interesting and I like games like this. Now, as I say though, there, there are, so there are some fun mechanisms and mechanics here. And then there's other things that just kind of make you scratch your head. The, uh, the um, market, you got all these different little items and you, you can take them and you can buy them and you can sell them do some pick up and deliver stuff, you know, and, and you've got the options, you can do that, or you can be more of a pirate. And the problem is you go to the market and the market, it's just kind of convoluted. It's, it seems like it's unnecessarily fiddly and complex where it should be a little more straightforward. And I understand what they're doing because they're trying to kind of make it so you can, you can, a market is kind of somewhat, manip it can be manipulated. And, and also too, it's, where you want to go is dependent on where the market is is kind of where there's a need for what you're selling, right? And so I get that and I appreciate that, but still at the same time, it was just it was just it seemed like it was needlessly complex the way you would interact with the market there. So I was, again, I was disappointed in that. Now this game is a sandbox game, and I, I like sandbox game, sandbox games. I love these big open world games. There's a lot of science fiction versions of this, you know, uh, you look at um, Outer Rim, Star Wars Outer Rim, you look at Firefly, the board game, Zia, the drift system. So there's a lot of these kinds of games that exist. But the game that this one obviously very much reminded me of was Merchants of Marauders. It seems like this is kind of Merchant Marauders with like a lot of more stuff added onto it. Um, and the reality is I feel like a lot of that other stuff that they add on to this game doesn't really doesn't really help it, um, doesn't really benefit it. I feel like Merchants and Marauders, it was just a far more streamlined uh, version of this, and this game kind of gets needlessly complicated. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff here I like, and I'll say this. I think if you are someone who is willing to invest the time 
into Captain's Log. I think if you're someone who is really, you're going to buy this game and you're going to play it and play it and play it and really get into it, I think you'll have some great adventures here. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. But for a more casual player, it just, it, it's, there's too much here. It, like I said, there's a standard mode and then an expert mode. The standard mode is, is, is all right, but there is a few little things here that are very complex. And then when I'm reading and trying to implement some of these expert mode stuff, it just, it, it, it was way too much for me. Now, like I say, I, I played a single-player game, and I kind of played it a little wrong when I was beginning because I was doing standard stuff, and then I brought in the the, the uh, more expert stuff. Because I didn't play like a complete game, and I haven't played it multiplayer, I want you to look at this as more of kind of a an impressions video than a full review. But with that being said, uh, what I can recommend is, is a try it before you buy it. Like I say, if you're willing to put the time into it, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this game, but a casual player, it's 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 just too much and it's too convoluted. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out. Please subscribe. And if you really do like the channel, like these videos, please uh, consider clicking on the super thanks button here on the home screen of the uh, video and uh, making a contribution. We'd really appreciate that. That as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, how do pirates know that they're pirates? They think, therefore they are. I love pizza.